And let the bidding begin. I hear one life, one life, two life, two life, three life, three life, four life, five life. Going once, going twice. Sold at five life. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben, you here for another Legacy video. And today Ryan has asked me to brew around their pet card, Pain's Reward. You bid any amount of life. In turn order, each player may then top the high bid. The bidding ends if the high bid stands. The high bidder loses life equal to the high bid and draws four cards. So let's kind of evaluate this card by Legacy standards. Now, if for three mana, you draw four cards in Legacy, that's pretty damn good. We have people playing Lorien Revealed and being perfectly happy to pay five mana for three cards. Admittedly, like, that one is attached to a cantrip that always finds a land, so, like, take that with a grain of salt. But that should give you a general feel. And if we think about a lot of card advantage engines in Legacy, a lot of times we're pretty excited about a two mana draw two cards so on rate this is okay but you know there's some asterisks there because there's life loss associated with this and your opponent in some circumstances will be able to outbid you many times cards in legacy that give your opponents options end up being really awkward because the opponent has the ability to choose the option that is always going to be worse for you. And many of these bidding cards just don't quite have what it takes in order to be played on their own, despite these cards being very, very similar in their nature to cards that are banned in one or more formats. So, if we are going to make Payne's Reward playable here, we need to do something to break parity. That is, we need to make one of these choices significantly worse for our opponent and make it so that either way this goes, it is a benefit for us. Let's take a look at what Ryan originally sent me. Ryan sent me a rough draft and basically said, take the wheel, do what you need to do to make Payne's reward playable, and Ryan wasn't sure whether or not the deck should be mono black or blue black. The general idea was to use card draw punishing effects like Orcish Bowmasters and Shoulder the Apocalypse to make it so that your opponent is heavily incentivized to let you draw for, or if they don't, you just get to go and burn them out for a large amount. If your opponent draws four cards while Shoulder is in play, that is eight damage. That is roughly half your opponent's life total. That's pretty cool. And Hull Breacher was to be a, supposed to be another thing that is supposed to go and punish your opponent for drawing cards. Here was kind of my general thought on the deck list. Something that I say a lot on this channel is when you're trying to play a multicolor Ancient Tomb mana base, it's really like you're playing one more color in your mana base. And I think with Urza Saga and Ancient Tomb in this deck list, it's not going to be a very good Brainstorm Ponder deck in the first place. And if we kind of think about Hull Breacher, this is a replacement effect, right? And these are triggers off Shouldred and Orcish Bowmasters. So if you have the Hull Breacher in play, your and your opponent like casts a cantrip or something like that, you're never going to get that damage associated with these things. You know, you're still stopping the cantrip for the most part, but a lot of times the damage is going to be the most critical thing. So I essentially thought that this deck list was trying to do too much. I think the Shadow Spear makes the Urza Saga very attractive, and it's another way to gain some life other than just Exsanguinator Cavalry, which has been very good in Legacy in the one league that I've played with it. Uh, more leagues coming soon, I think, with that card. So essentially, I think the real loss of, of, of dropping blue is Force of Will, because when you get a draw four and you can just go and, you know, draw a force of will out of that draw four and a blue card to pitch with it, and you already have something strong on the board, like, that is a real plan. I think if you want to stay in blue, you need, um, you know, another wheel of fortune effect like Echo of Eons, but then that requires putting LED into the deck, which felt like a step too much. So I figured we should shift into mono black. 
And it's not just all about the mana base here. I think it's conceptually about trying to make Pain's Reward work. We are trying to treat this either as a draw four card or a burn spell. If we are trying to treat this as a burn spell, burn spells work better when you have early aggression. So if we play Grief and Troll and reanimate them early on, and then we play this card, our opponent in many cases can't go and pay that life, and so we just have a three mana draw four, which we can often do off of two lands, or we don't even have to do it off two lands sometimes because we have some acceleration here. There are some things that I'm unsure about. I'm unsure exactly how many lands I should be running versus extra fast mana like Lotus Petal to make the card draw off of these better. I'm unsure whether or not I need Thoughtseize in game one more than I need removal of some nature. The Pain's Reward puts a little bit of strain on my slots. Like, I want a little more discard, I want a little more fast mana, or a little more removal, and I feel like I can't quite fit all of that. It's possible I can run this deck without reanimate and troll, but then, like, grief is going as well. And at that point, I don't think we have the aggro options available to maximize this card. Most of the sideboard stuff here is pretty stock. Uh, again, not really sure on the numbers. You need some sort of Chalice of the Void or Thoughtseize type card in your 75, I think, to have a reasonable shot versus combo. I'm willing to drop the like Reanimate Grief Scam Troll package. I can put Chalice in this deck in game one as something else that can lead into Pain's Reward so that if your opponent draws a bunch of one drops off Pain's Reward, you don't care. I'm not sure which way this needs to go without some reps. One card that I do want to highlight is Dismember. I've been really impressed with this card in Legacy recently, specifically because it's a one mana way to kill an initiative creature. And if you can kill an initiative creature on one and then play an Orcish Bowmasters to take the initiative, that gives you a ton of agency in being able to actually reasonably win a game versus initiative creatures. So yeah, let's let's see how good Payne's Reward is, and this will also serve as a victory lap for Exsanguinator Cavalry, so we can see how strong that is. Remember, if you ever need to buy any of these cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order while supporting my content. Let's battle. All right, I'll be keeping this opening hand. Um, if we don't draw another black spell, I always have to pitch Payne's Reward to grief so that I can do the whole grief reanimate grief nonsense. Drew another black card. I I think following up my grief with Douthy Voidwalker for aggression is better than playing Pain's Reward. So rip card deck is built around, but oh. Oh. That is three Veil of Summers that my opponent cannot currently cast. Yeah, that's fine. We're going to take an Infernal Tutor. Then we are going to reanimate that Grief. We'll take that Brainstorm. We will leave my opponent with a pile of Veil of Summers that are borderline unusable. They also don't have green mana currently. They have green mana now. That's fine. Like, the game from here is just punch my opponent in the face a handful of times until they are dead. I don't believe I cycle this turn. I can cycle off Ancient Tomb. I don't think I need to do that. So I'm going to play Douthy Voidwalker. My opponent can Veil of Summer just to turn it into a different card. And we have my opponent on a three-turn clock when they don't even have access to black mana. Okay, now they have access to black mana. They won't have Threshold for Cabal Ritual ever with Douthy Voidwalker around, though. And if I think things are going to get weird, I may end up being able to Veil of Summer using Douthy Voidwalker. Maybe that's my opponent fetching around Opposition Agent. Oh, Thoughtseize is fine. That draw would have ended up in the graveyard anyway. This doesn't change the clock for my opponent immediately. Just hit my opponent for 6. Put them to 8. I'm going to play Swamp. I don't want to play Uraborg and make my opponent's mana better. And it's very hard for them to win 
from the resources that they are currently on. Ooh, bow boy. That puts my opponent to two. Orcish Bowmasters means they are effectively at one. Uh, but I don't even, like, cast this card because it just, like, represents some nonsense. If I do this, it forces Veil of Summer to be cast, or my opponent dies. That puts them down another mana? I think I just let this resolve. A good portion of time, the... Yeah. Well, okay. Bowmasters is lethal at any point. In theory. Yeah. That's... This is all fine. Like, my, my opponent is dead on board. I don't need to attempt to use a Bowmasters unless they put something scary on the stack. And preferably, like, they would tap this and then I just always have them dead. All right. Thoughtseize, reasonable. Turok, opposition agent, reasonable. Aries, okay. Better if my opponent is beseech based. Worse if they're not. I didn't really get to see that. So I know that I am not really a fan of Shoulders Edict for a fast matchup like this one. I am going to keep this as an awkward land, I think. I don't know that I can reasonably play this card in this matchup. It just feels like I need to be disrupting my opponent and reducing their life total with every play that I make. And this requires another card to be in play already for it to actively be good. I think that's just gotta go. That leaves me with something that looks like this if I'm not bringing in Fairy. I go down one expensive card for a Turok and call this good and then Based on how much graveyard shenanigan we see in this game, if we lose, we decide whether or not I need fairy. And I think I say no to this one. It has mana in a slightly awkward way. It can do a turn two troll. But if my opponent does something like Thought Sees Me, I lose Hagra Molly, and then my hand does literal nothing, so I think we say no. Hand is very reasonable. I think I'm going to throw back the Cavalry, but it's unclear to me whether or not that's fully correct. Or are you going on turn one? That is a dress down under there. Sure. It is a Beseech. Is it just some goblins? Sure. Huh? Oh, wait, seven, eight. Oh, right, nine and ten. Yep, okay. No. All right, it is Beseech, so I do want Fairy. Uh, we will make that adjustment. I now need to fit 4x Fairy into the deck. If I do that, Turox can probably go. I can shave some Shouldreds, just kind of keep myself lower to the ground. Or I can trim some Exsanguinator Cavalries. Again, the life gain off those is kind of nice because the Beseech lines often kind of hit a cap of what they're capable of doing. Maybe adjust... No, that's what I just did. I want one more of these. Maybe adjust something like that. This is a reasonable opening hand. I don't think it's any better than reasonable. It's not one of the higher upside things we can do with, like, grief, reanimate grief. But it's thought sees on one, shut off graveyard on two. That's hopefully good enough for being on the play, especially after my opponent mulligans. Do I just take the Echoing Truth and stick Douthy? Or do I take the Ponder? I think I take the Echoing Truth. I just think conceptually I really like the idea of very quickly shutting off the graveyard. And the Ponder's fine. That's Lotus Petal being played out, which means that my opponent can have things like Veil of Summer available. Um, that they do want to represent. I don't think I need to be playing around days here. I'm not expecting that. The graveyard's off, and then I will have five or so damage per turn cycle available to me. Uh, yeah, that's a great draw. We'll hit in for our three. Opponents at 16. Gonna imprint the Hagra Mauling. Drop the Cavalry. And then Bowmasters is the follow-up. We're fine just playing this end of turn. The two damage that it represents 
is the difference between this being a two turn clock and not. Let's see if there's a veil. There is not. Reef is cool. Send them. So that puts my opponent to eight. Uh, we don't need to be using a blood token right now. Uh, yeah, we'll take the Beseech. And the Infernal Tutor is not scary when my opponent can't be hellbent here. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, just the best place to keep your online deck lists. And the reason I say that is it just has so much functionality. So for example, let's take a look at some random legacy deck here. You can click on your various two drop slots and you can see what percent chance you have of casting various things on curve. And you can get a breakdown of your mana symbols and all of that stuff. And there's a lot more here than just this. Consider checking it out. We've got a slightly awkward one here. I can go Swamp Ancient Tomb into this. If I draw another black land, this is reasonable follow-up. And then like that can be the play afterwards. But I will have taken a lot of damage off Ancient Tombs. It's possible I should just mulligan this one accordingly. It's like fine if this works out. And very not fine if it doesn't. Let's try keeping this. Like it, it has a pretty solid conceptual sequence in a fair matchup. Are you a fair polluted delta? Thought sees. Unsure if fair polluted delta yet. We'll check in again in another turn. My opponent tanked for a very, very long time before choosing Exsanguinator Cavalry. So, I don't know what they're doing. This turn should be very telling, though. A Wasteland, got it. So, we are probably playing against a Delver variant. Do I Grief? Grief could disrupt specifically, like, Force of Will blue card. If I Grief, the Pain's Reward is the worst card in my hand. Pain's Reward is probably like four turns away from being relevant in this game. I think I am supposed to grief this turn to either clear the way for Bowmasters to resolve and stick or to stop something like a Merktide Regent from just easily taking over this game. Okay. We are playing against Beans, not Delver. So... I can take the Lorien Revealed and it takes my opponent's green mana while also taking them off of Force of Will. That allows them to Fatal Push the Bowmasters though, which is awkward. I think I'm supposed to take the Fatal Push and if my opponent wants to Force of Will Bowmasters, then I just have a decent chance at sticking something like a Shouldred soon. Yes. And I guess I'm just going to make them make that decision right now. Is this worth two of your cards? They say no. Sure. So I've got a Bowmasters that is... Wow, not cycling the Lorien Revealed. Not saying that's wrong. I'm just surprised. I guess they can still do it on their turn off the Wasteland mana. Uh, yeah. The Orc gets bigger. My opponent will Wasteland this, so I can't drop Shoulder it immediately. Lol. Well, so I actually want to reanimate pre-combat because if my opponent casts Force of Will, they trigger up the Beanstalk, which grows my creature, and then I ping them. I'll send in for four. That did pitch the Lorien Revealed. So uh, my mana's a little awkward. But I have a very good clock and some anti-cantrip stuff in play. Uh, my cards are very good once I get one more black mana. Uh, the dreaded Bowmasters, the Bowmasters. Why don't you sacrifice a non-token creature for me? And then you can make a chump blocker. Yep, that's fine. And I think I've got this one as long as I draw black mana in a timely fashion. Um, if I don't, my opponent can reasonably draw out of this situation. Ugh. I mean, we've, we've got power on board, which is great, but I kept this hand knowing that the hand is great as long as I draw that second black mana, and it's turn six, so I've whiffed on but five draws. Arctide's very bad. I've got a Shoulder's Edict, luckily, so I at least have the chance to answer it. Sacrifice a non-token creature. I think a Force of Will basically ends this game. 
But we dodged that. Murderous cut. Sure. No, that's very good. Thanks, deck. Yeah, so at this point I've lost all agency. It's just fully, is there a swamp on the top of the deck in the next card or two? Because if there's not, my opponent will just keep drawing cards with beans and we're done. Sure. Cool. So now my opponent just gets to uh, gulp to their hand and start getting card advantage. I'm not giving them more beans, hopefully. I think I'm just going to go like this. They did take the beans, unfortunately. I think it is hard to split that pile in a way that's attractive enough that they don't go for the face down beans. Like, I can put the beans face up, but with no pressure on the board, I feel like I on their side would be just be like snapping up the beans every single time. So, I'm not going to split that pile 3 1. Sure. Uh, yeah, no, this is a disaster. Cool, cool. This also just kills me next turn, so we missed on every black mana source and troll. So, you know, what do you want me to say? All right. Yeah, I mean, can't be mad. That's variance. Uh, I often board into rock versus control, but if my opponent is playing Bowmasters, that's a lot less attractive. I like Sudden Edict a lot to take out Murktide. I probably play Opposition Agent as another critter. Don't think I like Thoughtseize versus my opponent's pile O card advantage. This is very awkward versus opposing Bowmasters. I might need it. it. It's such a dead card if my opponent has Bowmasters. Like that just tilts that math so far in their favor. All right. Kind of unhappy about that. This is the same as last time, where if I draw a black mana source, this hand is nuts, and if I don't, I just lose the game. I don't know that this is a strong enough card on its own to gamble my whole game on it. I'm going to try to find something a little more consistent. Oh, this will do. I'll keep this getting rid of City of Traders. We'll just play Urborg and Pass with the intention of doing an end-of-turn cycle troll. I think I will just play Cavalry on my turn though to stay mana efficient and just use all of my mana grab that swamp edict is reasonable and uh we'll just play an evasive creature it forced a brainstorm and it's in play what do we got just beans i mean beans are obviously very good um I think I am going to continue the trend of use all my mana and not just go ham with this reanimate as quickly as possible. Wow. I guess it can trip so they get some back from it. So I'll hit for two and then start scaling this up. It does have menace, so Bowmasters is not a particularly great blocker for it. I've got reanimate for grief next turn. I've got shoulders edict to get a creature out of play. Thoughtseize is very good. Like, that taking my reanimate means that I don't get to grief next turn. And then there's a ponder, presumably trying to make the next land drop here. Alright, cool. A murderous cut. Uh, that's pretty strong. So, let's loot here. I think I'm still looting away the land. Eh. This is just a threat next turn. Okay. The wasteland's really awkward right now. Sure. No follow-up play after making the land drop. Okay. Well, let's cast trolls until my opponent dies. An edict. Sure. So just thinking about Payne's reward here. It's turn five. If I were to cast that card right now, the bidding war would be incredibly awkward and probably in favor of my opponent as they have open mana for orcish bowmasters. Yeah, it may be that, like, ugh, man, Lorraine revealed going on top here is really rough. And a Merktide Regent. Do I play just, do I, like, do I just play troll first? I think I just play troll first. Like, I think I am willing to take a hit from this. And it's only a problem if my opponent proactively plays around Sudden Edict specifically, 
by sorcery speed dropping a creature. Like, it, I, I have set up a situation where I can be punished for what I have done. I think I need to work on ending this game. Like, every turn that this game goes on, my opponent's deck gets better and mine gets worse. So I think I've just got to hold up here. Thank you, Wasteland Urborg. Opponent disagrees. I think Black Black is very important right now. Witherbloom Command for a Drain and returning a land. Got it. And returning a Wasteland. And I get Edicted. That's rough. Sure. Mana's a little weird here. I'm going to do this counterably. Back a non-token creature, please. And then we have Sudden Edict available if I need it. Yeah, but like future Merktides are great. Force of Wills are great. The Wasteland is very good. I, I think we're at the point where this one has just slipped away. My primary source of card advantage is just like not reasonable in this matchup. Since my opponent is playing Bale, like Bowmasters. I think with my opponent having a full grip and beans online, having just drawn three cards and another one off the beans, I, I'm, I'm ready to give this one up. So here we have a hand that can cast Pain's Reward immediately. Since I am the starting player and I will be tapping an Ancient Tomb, I can never win the bidding war. And I have no threat to follow this up. So this just has to be a mulligan. This is a reasonable hand where I think I sacrifice speed to just keep a decent mix of lands and spells. I have a 2-3-4 curve, assuming I draw one land. Yeah, cast a chalice. Please go down a card. Awkward. Okay. That's almost good. I'll use that a little bit later. We might be playing against Sphere of Resistance lands. We could be playing against some sort of, like, mud artifact deck. Probably figure out this turn one way or another. Smells like lands. See what this gets. Basic Forest. Just fetching around Opposition Agent. That's reasonable. Um, Grief's not great. We are not going to expose Ancient Tomb to Wasteland yet. We are just going to go ahead and play Douthy Voidwalker. If this is a lands deck, we are shutting off the graveyard as a resource for things like Life from the Loam. It's possible this could be some very go big, big mana deck that is also playing Sphere, but there's not a lot of that around. I'm going to say that that confirms lands. Just charging up the old Blast Zone at sorcery speed as well. Which I don't know that there is a reason to do that. Other than, like, just being lazy and being able to F6. Sure. So I've got five mana this turn, and the question is, like, do I need to grief? I think I want to grief while Douthy Voidwalker is still in play. That way, I can send something to the exile zone if I need to. Huh. Awkward. The crop rotation can represent Urza Saga. It can also represent Dark Depths or Thespian Stage. My opponent can use two mana next turn to crop rotation, play Thespian Stage as their land drop, and produce a Merit Lage. If I put Shadow Spear under this, I can play around that a little bit better. One mana cast Shadow Spear, two mana equip, go to 24, have another turn to draw an out. I have a couple main deck edicts. But my opponent can just blast zone away this creature to stop me from doing that. So that's the thing. And I see what pace they're trying to play this game at. All right, we're getting some movement from my opponent. A crop rotation tapping Thespian stage. Finding dark depths. I don't understand. What did that accomplish? It's going to sanity check myself. So crop rotation, tapping these two for the additional cost for this. You still have Ancient Tomb in play. You get to produce your 2020. Now I just clock my opponent before dark depths matters. And I can also take their other crop rotation. Yeah, I, I don't understand unless there's something super weird over there, like Double Spirit Guide, that is about to punish me. No, that doesn't punish me. Like, yeah. 
But now we are just going to play another evasive creature. So we have lethal even if Douthy Voidwalker gets answered. And I take that crop rotation. Yeah, I I don't get it. Like these have menace and shadow. They're not blockable. Okay, they are doing the Dark Depths thing. Now what? You're down on board, Maze of Ith doesn't save you, you don't have the mana to fling it at me or something. Okay, yeah. So I have another Edict in the board. I have an Opposition Agent in the board. I can think about Fairy as well. It's kind of mid. I think I do like Pain's Reward here. My opponent isn't playing something like Bowmasters. And I can frequently... Not always, but frequently use this as a burn spell if my opponent does look like they are about to stabilize. But I think that just means that I draw cards. I guess drawing cards is fine. My inkling here is to go down two shouldreds and just slightly lower my curve. But it may just be that like Payne's reward is just worse than shouldred because shouldred works towards winning the game on its own. And it's pretty good against the Maze of Ith type stall things. Let's, let's be okay with drawing a Pain's Reward sometime, but Trim, this is okay. I'm going to keep it. I'm not excited about it. But it has three lands to its name, um, counting one from Troll and the ability to quickly reanimate a Troll if my opponent does not have Bojukabog. I believe I am supposed to play Swamp this turn and cycle rather than play this land tapped. Because I think I always want to attempt Douthy Voidwalker next turn on curve. Uh, that card's very good against me. Sylvan Library. Well, my plans might have changed a little bit. So we're going to pick up a Swamp. Reanimates for days. I think I am just playing... Bowmasters and making my opponent's Sylvan Library as awkward as possible. Let's pick up an Orc. Got a Sheldred's Edict for one of the Urza Saga tokens. I can do some reanimate troll nonsense as well. Potentially also shutting off the graveyard. My man is a little tight right now. Hopefully the same is true for my opponent though. Okay, that's fine. So my opponent can make a 1-1. One, one. I think we're going to set up a little sneaky trap here. I'm going to attack in with both of these. My opponent will presumably make an Urza Saga Construct token and block my Orcish Bowmasters. Or not. Well, we'll go to plan B. Plan B is baller as well. And if my opponent crop rots for Bojugabog to stop this, like, cool. They don't make an Urza Saga token and extract their value out of those cards. Right, my opponent sacks the Wasteland, finds Bog, and my opponent misses out on Urza Saga value, which is great. Uh, note that I can use Douthy Voidwalker to end up with an Urza Saga of my own if I feel like that's a thing that I want to do. There's a decent chance that I do want to do that. But probably not immediately. One for Mox Diamond. But just went that way. A hey, Dark Depths. Sure. Kind of like to use Hagra Mauling on this token and save the Edict for later. A new Urza Saga. Sure. That may be enough for me to just... Douthy Voidwalker Wasteland. My opponent might be saying no to that. I don't think my opponent has played much of their deck. I think I am interested in sack this, use Wasteland, play Wasteland, reanimate Voidwalker, Wasteland Saga, things go back under Voidwalker, you sack a creature token, I bash in for two, and that was on board avoidable with Pithing Needle naming the only thing on board with an activated ability. Expedition map, sure. All right, here's the search. 
Finding Tabernacle. Uh, sure. That's fine, I'll pay. I hit another land drop. If I would like, I can just wasteland that Tabernacle. I don't really need to right now. I might still just grief my opponent. I don't plan on wastelanding and just intend on attacking with these things. Stopping a tutor seems reasonable. Am I pitching this or this? This is just wastelandable. Yeah, let's not be wastelandable. See what's going on over there. Wasteland and Rashadden port. Choice to not be wastelandable rewarded. Swamp cycle. Already made my land drop. Attack for five. Opponent's at ten. Okay, that's fine. I'm not really planning on casting any more spells this game. I've got some stuff to pay for. My opponent is making a novice mistake here. So by tapping with Rashadden Port right now, before I have paid for my things, they give me one more mana going into the main portion of my turn. The way this is supposed to work is that you let me pay for all three of my things. I will have one swamp remaining, and then you tap that one down. That is an essential trick to know if you are going to be playing Rashadden Port alongside Tabernacle. Uh, cavalry is fine. I am not unhappy to draw more threats for, you know, the worst case scenario where all these things disappear somehow. Oh, do we have a spell? We have a crop rotation, sure. Maze is fine. I'm still actively doing damage. Sure. I'm now doing two damage a turn. I've already played a land. Next turn, though, I can potentially... Like drop an Urza Saga if I would like. I do also have Crop Rotation available right now, but that doesn't really get me anywhere cool. I also wonder if my opponent is supposed to be working towards a kill rather than trying to turtle up. Like you can take a called shot and go for half of the combo there or something. They're doing it again. You saw that this didn't do anything last turn. I'll just pay for all my stuff. Okay, cool. Um, this allows me to play another threat this turn. I'm going to send in for five. That's really two. Because of the maze of ith. When it goes to six, I'll drop the cavalry. And pass the turn. I have my opponent on a two-turn clock. Uh, there is no reason to make that play with that timing. You can wait until after you've seen your card draw. This land is tapped. All right, they're passing the turn again. I'm going to pay for all my stuff. Yeah, and they just continue to port. Got another Douthy Voidwalker, um, which is an interesting draw, but probably one that I'm not going to end up doing anything with. Sure. So my opponent is going to take four. Going to two. Puts me at 18. If I attack with this again, I'm above 20. A Merit Lodge hit doesn't kill me. There's not an untapped black source over there. I don't think Wasteland matters. Uh, we'll just chill. Um, another thing that I didn't talk about is that at some point in this game, my opponent can just take a few points of Orcish Bowmaster's damage in order to get some real looks at something that allows them to sculpt a plan. Like, at other points in this game, if my opponent had just shoved a 20-20 rather than trying to turtle up, like, they have a very real chance at winning. So it may also have been correct to just, you know, eat two initial points of damage from the Bowmasters and make the Orc bigger in order to try to actually win the game instead of trying not to lose the game. All right. Um... This is a very awkward hand. I can play tapped Hagra Mauling on turn one to be able to do things like Douthy Voidwalker on turn two. Ancient Tomb is fine. Um, I'm going to say this is good enough, um, but it's definitely a little bit awkward if I get Wastelanded. I could also Chrome Mox on turn one. And then I can always troll cycle in the first turn cycle. 
I'm not really sure what I want to Chrome Mox. I guess I could just Chrome Mox the Hogra Mauling and then play a Swamp. That's probably okay. And then I have some flexibility in what I get to do on the next turn cycle, but doing this at sorcery speed, like I just did, means that if my opponent has a reanimate, it's really awkward. Oh, this is fine. I think. So we're okay versus like Blood Moons, Chalices. Uh, that's okay, actually. Because this can make my opponent sacrifice a Planeswalker. My opponent will still have a 4-4, like... Still a problem, but we're not just going to be stone cold dead to this. I'm at 16. Goldred, sure. Uh, it's a little awkward that I have four mana and not two valid plays. But we're kind of hoping that my opponent is all in on this Minskin Boo. And that by answering this, we buy time to like play Shouldred, which walls the Boo. If my opponent can play like a follow up initiative creature or a follow up Minskin Boo here. Uh, life is awful, and I probably instantly lose. We're hoping they can't. Um, that's a little awkward. Okay. That is potentially beatable. I think we got a shouldered to wall the boo. And, uh, we'll see how this goes. The opponent presumably has another land, land, land drop if they were willing to play the Urza Saga. Sure. Bowmasters doesn't do a ton right now. I think I'm in a grief rather than Douthy Voidwalker. Douthy Voidwalker puts the Urza Saga under this, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, I think I am just into the grief, though. Just rip an initiative creature out of hand. Uh, not an initiative creature. Not a card I would have expected my opponent to have either. Uh, another Urza Saga is kind of horrifying, though. Uh, like, my mana base does not have Wasteland to deal with Urza Saga. And I don't think I've done enough early damage where I can just kind of force myself over the finish line. Shadow Spear could also be a little problematic. Like, Shadow Spear on Boo. Oh, okay, it's Opal. Sure. Okay. Well, I don't have Triple Black right now. I can't multi-spell. Yeah, I wish I could uh, play fourth Aerolingas. If I had played Douthy Voidwalker before Grief, that would have been possible the following turn. But we're not there. I think I'm going to play the black black card this turn. And maybe some portion of the time I multi-spell next turn. Um, Path forward's really tough here. My opponent just has a pair of 5-5s five and a 4-4. Four four. Gonna be bigger next turn. I don't know. Maybe I have to hold up Bowmasters this turn. This might have to happen. Just treat this as a removal spell. This opens up this to attacking, though. Everything's bad. Everything is bad. Fuck. <laughs> no. Um, so if I reanimate Shouldered, I go to five. My opponent has three different attackers. Shouldered gets in front of one. Double chump block others. Nothing cool in exile with a void counter. Alright. This can't block anyway. I'll send it in. And, uh... I don't know how exactly I win? My opponent has Shadow Spear. Life's really bad. Even just a Lotus Petal. So, or, yeah, or equivalent, so my opponent can make another construct and grow these is rough. Okay, no, yeah, yeah. Sure. Can I get nine on the backswing through two blockers? Feels like no. Let's try to figure out a way where I kill my opponent. So I do Bowmasters. Ping my opponent to eight. Um, which is actually like six because of this shoulder trigger. Shouldered blocks that cleanly. I have to block both of these. I stay alive. Grief not attacking might have cost me. Ains reward, huh? So that's interesting. What's over here? Urza Saga. So I play Pain's reward. I bid one life go to six. My opponent lets me draw three. 
I find a removal spell, and my opponent dies. All right. Know what? I did not try uh, testing this card with x equals zero. I'm not sure how it handles that. I could look up an oracle ruling, but I'll just pay one life. So I bid one. Okay, so I now gain eight life. That puts me to 14. I can attack with both of these. Doesn't really make sense. My opponent is at six. I can take a hit from one of those, not two of those. So I need three bodies that can block. That means grief, shouldered grief. Okay, what if I attack with all three of my creatures? Does that do anything different? So my opponent blocks shouldered, takes six, shouldered is dead, one construct is dead, they are at two, they have three valid attackers. I die, that doesn't work. Okay. So I always do this then. Cast Grief. Opponent doesn't have any cards. Crash in with Douthy Voidwalker. Opponent goes to five, which is really like three. Because they're about to take two from Shouldred. I have three blockers. My opponent presumably can't get one construct to the size of a 12 12. So I think I'm okay. I think I pulled this one out of my ass. And Payne's Reward did something in the video. So everyone can stop yelling at me in the comments. Defense Grid is fine. These are 10 10s. Uh, which does not leave me dead. It leaves me at 2. And then Douthy Voidwalker cleans up my opponent. <sighs> yeah. I mean, they've got to go for it there. And we'll just swing for lethal. Ooh. That was insane. So I think I like Dismember versus this opponent. They're going to be playing like early initiative creatures and such that I would like to take off the table cleanly with as little mana as possible. I think I like Thoughtseize versus this opponent. Thoughtseizing an initiative thing and then reanimating it is really strong, but I don't know that I'm supposed to do that on the draw. So I think I like Dismember and Sudden Edict here. I can do this to help out with Boo. And that's reasonable as well. All right, how is Payne's reward, just objectively? Probably too slow. It did, it did bail me out this game. But Bowmasters represents the ability to go wide and take the initiative, as well as multiple blockers. Douthy Voidwalker is unblockable. Exsanguinator Cavalry is much needed life gain to help stabilize. And great for animate. Yeah, I can't see cutting cards other than this easily. So this just gives me more removal. And maybe I don't do this. Like, I don't know what else I would take out here. The remaining cards all feel reasonable. This is kind of something we see a lot. When you build around a weak card, even when you add synergy to that card, it still often ends up being the weakest thing in the deck. Okay, cool. So, what do I pitch to Grief? I probably just pitch a 4-drop here. Despite the fact that, you know, Shouldred, as we saw, is a perfectly reasonable card in this matchup. Um, this is not the creature I was hoping to uh, take. You know, my opponent doesn't actually have initiative creatures. Let's take their Haymakers. Just take the ring and fourth air lingas, I think, and make it so that they're trying to win the game purely on the back of Urza's Saga. Urza's Saga can eventually get them the white mana for the Swords to Plowshares. That's, you know, a thing that I can see coming ahead of time. Um, but we're kind of hoping to do a very large amount of damage to my opponent before that happens. And as long as they don't naturally draw an artifact, Bowmaster currently pings and kills the first Urza Saga token, which is a really big deal. As I will also just, ooh, knock them off of Metalcraft as well. Um, in process of doing that. So, grab Swamp. And I believe that Bowmaster's on the Urza Saga token is much, much, much better than putting a troll into play. Like, we can put that troll into play later. 
All right, there it is. Here's Bow Boy. And this very specifically being a 1 1 right now is excellent because my opponent currently will not have Metalcraft or a Mox Opal to produce white for Swords to Plowshares. So they might have to get something like a Lotus Petal instead, which is much better value for me. All right, so this is Chrome Mox. I assume we're going to imprint that Spirit Guide. Oh, okay. Throw a ring at me. That's cheeky. A shoulder now. So my opponent can Spirit Guide to activate Urza Saga and have a pair of 3-3s. Three I think that's okay. I think I am just going to go ahead and attack with both of my evasive creatures here. It's possible I'm supposed to attack with all four, though. I'm going to think about that for a second. No, actually, I, th I think I want my opponent to block the grief. Because then I get to rip swords to plowshares out of their hand with reanimate. Which is a thing that I would like to do. So reanimate, target grief, take swords, um, so that I make my land drop. Let's just do that now. My opponent can make another construct. These are three threes. They're about to become four fours. Yeah, and this is where the theoretical white mana is. And now I'm just going to use Douthy Voidwalker and Shouldred to drain out my opponent. Agra Mauling is immediately worth 3 damage. Let's take that immediate damage. On a controls no basic lands, it only costs 3. Puts my opponent to 2. And that means that a Shouldred trigger should always kill them the next turn cycle. Unless things get very weird. Bond's deck is cool. I don't know how good it is, but it's cool. We have gotten the uh, the GGs in chat. So we are now 3-1. and one. All right, we have a very different sort of opening hand, um, one that we haven't had this league. This is just an Exsanguinator Cavalry into Exsanguinator Cavalry start. Uh, we know what we're up against. Okay, I have to make a decision on turn 1 about whether Pain's Reward or Douthy Voidwalker is a better card. I am basically never going to play Douthy Voidwalker over playing the Sequin Exsanguinator Cavalry based on how fast I expect this game to go. I think I am keeping Pain's Reward. I, I think just playing these so I can outbid my opponent gives me the chance to draw into a relevant card. I'm going to start on City of Traders knowing that some portion of the time I end up just throwing away this land. But I think gaining four life by playing City of Traders um, over the two turns that I intend to use it and maybe six life is kind of a huge deal. If my opponent is starting on Thespian Sage, I expect that on turn three they produce a 20-20. Ghost Quarter. They are ghost quartering their own land as awkward mana fixing this life from the loam exploration Urza saga that's fine this is not faster than what i'm doing i don't think sphere is awkward having chosen to play city of traders uh, it is what it is like we'll lose the land spend four mana on this uh, and produce a shit ton of power because these these trigger on each other so i get to put two counters on this and like their you know two two ish urza saga token is just not gonna Ooh, maze of Ith is very good against what i'm doing all right so let's ship in here they maze that one this one gets through and gets two counters let's bid some life I also have some blood tokens to use, but I think I'm supposed to just do this. Let the bidding begin. I'll start at one. Three. Oh, this is raised by how much? Raised by one. Nine. Raised by one. All right, I have drawn cards. 
shoulder it is great. And I am set to gain a very large amount of knight life with these knights, so I think I'm okay. I'm not in any danger of just dying to a construct token immediately. Don't know why we're doing that in upkeep rather than draw step. Or like after draw step. Always make plays with the highest amount of information that you can. Alright, there's a 4-4. Four, four, a second maze of Ith. Uh, that is pretty legitimately annoying, but like this is what cards like Shouldered are for, right? I am thinking about some cute blood token based lines. I think I'm not messing around with those this turn. Oh right, Sphere is in play. Then I'm definitely not. I mean, I'll attack with these and make my opponent... Um, I guess I could double block. Eh. We're chilling. Like, Shouldred is going to gain me a bunch of life off these blood tokens and my draw steps while slowly draining my opponent out. Um, a second Urza Saga starts to get a little weird, but I have very good blockers. I just assume that's what my opponent is getting. Like, I guess Tabernacle could get involved. It is Caracas for Shouldred. Sure, that's fine. It's annoying, but it's fine. So I have six mana to work with. These still don't get to get in. I think at this point I'm going to go ahead and just generate a third attacker. And then I will hold up Bowmasters, presumably for my opponent's end of turn. Sure. Uh, Crucible of Worlds Urza Saga is some shit. Um, not super pleased about that development. Yep. Also grows these to 4-4s four relevantly. I think this is worth life to do. Like at some point I will be making a go-wide alpha strike. Plus these are just blockers for the backswing. Alright. Nope. Not you two. I assume this, this get mazed. And I only end up accomplishing 3 points of damage. I think that's what ends up happening. Then I think we're just on continue to go wide. Like that swords happily. Rockus for shoulder is a pain. Not more than Crucible Saga though. Because like not only is it Crucible Saga, it also gets stage, which then can be a third maze of it or more sagas. Fuck. I think I get stalled out here. I think it's now very difficult for me to get over the finish line. Sure. Um, do I want to lose to, to do some blood token nonsense? Probably. I, th I think my opponent is running away with this game. Let's just junk the shouldered and do this again. Junk that chrome mox. Ugh. All right. I think we're going deeper. This isn't doing it. If I swords to plowshares a token, eh. Attack with everything. Two exsanguinator cavalries get mazed. Only deal like four to my opponent. And then a pile of maze of iths and urza sagas get there. I think. I guess I can take one more draw. I don't really know what I'm looking for, though. Yeah, that's fine. We are not great versus Saga. Thought we were getting there that match. Um, I thought Shouldered was just going to be the thing that put me over. Was wrong. I think I like Edict. Unsure on Dismember. I think I keep the Shouldered despite the Caracas awkwardness. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do other stuff like this for construct tokens. Feels like no. Bowmasters aren't particularly good here. Go two Bowmasters down for these two. And then maybe I keep a couple for chump blockers. Alternatively, maybe I play a couple of fairies. Like, with the intention of some portion of the time truly casting them as 2-2 flyers. No. Uh... This just has two ETB tapped black lands. Um, turn one tapped land. Turn two cavalry. 
turn three, hopefully play one of these two. I guess this is fine. Alternatively, I can just start with Grief. Just like Grief my opponent pitching Shouldred, try to take an initial card that matters from their hand, and go hard on this card. That might actually be the best way to approach this hand. Is just attempt to punch a hole, stop a Swords to Plowshares, or a Chrome Mox or whatever that is going to put my opponent ahead initially. Um, this doesn't feel good. Uh, yeah, so I can take a piece of acceleration, but they end up with a piece of acceleration either way. Fuck. Mox Diamond is better at initially casting the life from the loam, but exploration is scarier long term. I think I'm going to take the exploration. I am probably stone cold dead to my opponent finding a wasteland, which doesn't feel good. Classic. And I uh, bottomed the other Hagra Mauling because I thought it was bad against Wasteland. Which obviously it is, and I wanted to keep an Edict so that I'm not just dead to a 2020 quickly. Um, but, yeah, life's awful. I think if I miss on a black card this turn, I just concede the game. Because my opponent has Wasteland Lock on me. Yeah, I, I think I am... I'm comfortable tipping my hat and showing myself the door. We did still end up with a positive finish in this league, and Payne's Reward did do some things. So, how do we feel about this deck at the end of the day? This deck was definitely carried by the mono black core. Um, I am unsure how this core, generally speaking, is supposed to be best utilized in Legacy. Like, there's builds with Chalice of the Void, there's builds with Reanimate, there's builds that are more aggressive, there's builds that have combo finishes. Um, I think the archetype, despite how much it is played, is still underexplored. This card did a couple of cool things at clutch moments, but in the Orcish Bowmaster's world, I don't know that you get to play something that looks like this. Because you are trying to break parity on this card with the Shouldreds and the Bowmasters, but if your opponent, incidentally, without trying 40% of the time, just has Orcish Bowmasters in their deck and does the same thing right back at you, uh, this is incredibly awkward. It's also a 3-mana card in a world where Days decks are very popular, with Blue Black Scam and various flavors of Delver decks being a huge portion of the metagame as well. If you want to play Payne's Reward, I think this deck is much more viable than what was originally submitted. For the most part, we didn't do things like trip over our mana this league. As a mono black deck, maybe we need Urza Saga, or sorry, maybe we need Wasteland to help against Urza Saga, which did kind of feel like a problematic card. Like maybe you cut two City of Traders, two Swamps, play four Wastelands. Like, maybe you're low enough to the ground to do that. Maybe if you start doing that, then Hagra Mauling becomes less attractive. Hagra Mauling was okay this league. I think I like that better than Crypt of Agadim in this slot. Ratios felt about right um, in terms of main deck and sideboard slot choices. I'm happy with how that came together. Exsanguinator Cavalry, again, proved to be pretty solid. Uh, if not for the strange double Maze of Ith scenario that came up, you know, that would have carried another set of games. I'm pretty comfortable going all in on this card, especially since it gives you a little bit of selection. Um, so I give this one a, a thumbs up, but, you know, the card that we built around was still the worst card in the deck, despite, you know, kind of trying to warp the deck a little bit around this card. But again, I think if you end up, you know, going this deep on Payne's Reward by going into another color, I think you get more problems by doing so than reward that you get by leaning further in. So if you need your Payne's Reward for your next local legacy event, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to get 5% off on your next order. And folks, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya!